Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Investing in real estate can create a financial fortress around your family. And the sooner you start, the bigger that fortress is. Today, we'll talk about starting early and you'll glean some secrets of several successful young investors on the Real Estate Guys radio program. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys Radio Show. I'm your host, Robert Helms. With me, as usual, our co-host and financial strategist, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. When is it too soon to get involved in real estate? If you talk to most real estate investors, they'll say, man, I wish I had started earlier. And I think that's true for me. I bought my first property at 24 years old, I believe, and uh, learned a ton in doing it, got the bug and never looked back. But I often wonder, man, what if I had bought that first property at at 20 or, or, you know, 21. How old were you, Russ, when you bought your first house? Uh, I think it was 19, maybe 18, but I was like right out of the chute. Yeah. And, and boy, you can compound so much when you start young. Today, we're going to talk about getting started at a young age. There's some pros, obviously, but there's also some challenges and we're just not going to wax on about it. Uh, we've got three young investors going to share their stories today. Yeah. I think for me, um, the only reason I was able to buy a property so early is because I had a mentor, my uncle. And uh, I was renting an apartment in Huntington Beach, California. And I thought I was living the life. And he said, you're crazy. You're throwing your money away. You should buy a property, buy a home. Like, I don't know anything about buying a home. He was living way out inland, you know, and I'm out living by the beach. And I said, that's a long commute. I'm working in Long Beach and he's living out near Alto Loma, Cucamonga, and which is way out towards San Bernardino, if you know the geography down there in Southern California. And so he, he said, well, just come on out and take a look. So went out there, took a look, borrowed a little bit of money from my wife's grandmother uh, for a down payment, signed a bunch of papers. I don't know what the interest rate was. I, I didn't understand anything. I just went along for the ride. I did what all the grownups in the room told me to do. But the net result of it is I end up owning the property. Fast forward just less than two years later, I made more money on that property uh, then my wife and I both were making working our full-time jobs. And so right away, I learned two important lessons in life. Equity happens and that your assets can work harder than you can or be more productive than you are. And the key to getting things done when you don't know what you're doing is being around the right people, having a mentor. And, and you know, even though I made a thousand mistakes after that, uh, I think that those two very, very valuable lessons really shaped my life in so many ways. So for young people who have an opportunity to get around the right people and the right ideas and the right actions early, and then they continue to act like they're young the rest of their career, a mistake I probably may, I, I didn't do that. I, I got too smart for myself too fast and I should have been more humble. I probably would have made less mistakes. Uh, but nonetheless, if you can get around those right people and those right lessons early and then just allow your efforts to compound Robert over time and know at 2040 seems like a dinosaur, <laughs> but I can tell you, you know, sitting here in my sixties, 40 looks like a spring chicken. And if you can allow 20 years of compounding work for you from your twenties to your forties, uh, long before you're 50 years old, you can have really built a substantive, a substantial uh, net worth and cash flow without really having to take an inordinate amount of risks. And so I think that's a lesson of real estate. That's a lesson of today's show. Get started young, get around the right people. And it's going to be great to hear 
what uh, the folks we're going to be talking to today have done because they're case studies in real life success as young investors. So whether you're a young person or you have young people in your life, I think you'll enjoy today's show. You'll meet three young investors who all started in their 20s today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Hi guys, my name is George Gammon from the Rebel Capitalist Show and you are listening to the Real Estate Guys my favorite podcast when it comes to macroeconomics and real estate investing. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program. Heard every weekend on this great radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com. If you ask most investors, they'll say, I wish I had started early. And today we're going to talk with some amazing young folks that are getting after real estate while still in their 20s. Let's welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program, our young friend, Robbie Butler. Hey, Robbie. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, coming on to share some of your story. Uh, as a young man, you're finding some success in real estate, which is exciting, of course. Uh, but take us through how you got interested in real estate and how you got started. I spent the first two years out of college observing the personal finance world, but not having much interaction with it, but was making some good savings from a W-2 job. As that began, I started to wonder about mortgages, interest rates, economic activity at a big picture. And so I started getting some research under my belt, doing some homework. And that led me to making my first home purchase. That home purchase was, although I didn't know it at the time, creatively financed in a way that led me into a whole new world. And so that experience of getting a little bit of creativity into a deal suddenly made me so excited about real estate. I also put some tenants in that home in a house hack situation, which taught me about the income side of real estate. And so all within the first six months of my first real estate deal was consumed with enthusiasm and started arranging myself to learn more and more and more. So that was the first step into the world of real estate was a simple home purchase. And Robbie, how old were you when you made that home purchase? Oh gosh, I was, I think 23, maybe 24. All right. I uh, bought my first property at 24 and wished I'd started at 20, but good job. Now, once you get a little taste, right, and you got tenants and they're making payments and so forth, you started to get more enamored of real estate, but you're also a pretty strategic guy. Take us through kind of what the next evolution looked like in your real estate investing path. That's a great question. So I started to think ahead and there's a great book out there called Your Next Five Moves. And I started to think, all right, most people love real estate and they buy a whole bunch of homes. Well, you begin to hit the 10 property limit where Fannie and Freddie won't finance you any longer yep. for properties. And so I said, well, there's a natural ceiling there. I don't want to hit that ceiling. Then I started to look and go, okay, well, what other ceilings can I avoid? And what is the business plan for real estate where you can avoid as many ceilings as possible? So I was pondering that question and coming up with no answers. My career at the time was a professional fundraiser, loved my job, but was doing this real estate evenings and weekends. And one day an email hit my inbox from the real estate guys that said, the world of syndication awaits you. You can raise money to do real estate deals. I ignored it for like three months. <laughs> and then one day it hit me. That's I'm literally raising money during the day and doing real estate in the evenings. Why wouldn't I put these two things together? So I attended that event and suddenly a business plan was laid out for me that made so much sense. And I started working on that business plan with a strong degree of focus. And that was probably only a year after that first home purchase. Well, that's a fascinating story because most folks who buy a house and decide maybe I'll buy another one and they live below their means and they save and they get themselves to where they can qualify. They probably don't think about being Fannie and Freddie out at, at the start, but they get to that point and then they have to search for something else. But in your case, you already had been in the fundraising side of the world, not for real estate investments, but that gave you kind of a, a chip in the game that a lot of folks don't have. That's right. And where I began using that, kind of tying those two ideas together of my professional background and my real estate background was simply calling investors and listening to what they were working on. That was so much fun because now it had the entrepreneurial side to it that up to that point in my life, I hadn't tasted, though I knew it was out there, I hadn't tasted it. From those observations, talking to those investors, I started to realize as well, I need to get some more experience here. Again, I'd attended an event or two. I'd grown more enthusiastic about real estate. 
but I started purchasing apartments in my own account. So kind of left that alone for a little bit. And buy, buying those apartments was probably the hardest thing I've ever done from a transactional standpoint to this point. It was a, a life lesson in so many different ways. Had to work out financing structures. Then when I didn't know that much about it, had to figure out proper pricing and negotiations. I was working direct with a seller. And so again, totally exposed in this way that I had never been before. And so they're asking me questions and I had a little bit of concept, but was just grinding it out and grinding it out. And so was talking to investors, but couldn't quite make the link and yet purchased these apartments, which then opened up a whole new world of real estate investing for me. Small apartments in my local market, but apartments nonetheless. And started to work out a little portfolio. And then the tidal wave really started of enthusiasm for real estate and and experiences that were occurring to me. I was managing myself and so opened up so many more doors of learning opportunities as I went. Well, what I love about your story is that instead of just reading and listening and learning and hoping someday to take action, you got yourself in the thick of it and you didn't know everything, but you started anyway. And by getting in there and doing the deals and talking to the lenders and having a relationship with a seller and talking to tenants, you started to figure out the real elements of the game in the real world. And that, of course, has led to now you're raising money to do bigger deals, which is something not everybody does. We're big fans of syndication. Anyone who listens to our show knows that. Uh, but that's not what most people do. Most people just buy in their own account. What was it that uh, inspired you to want to do bigger deals and use other people's money? It was the love for the unselfish element that I knew I wanted to build into a business practice that drew me towards it fully. It it made sense economically. It made sense from a business standpoint, but I knew people are reaching out to me. They're interested in my progress. They like hearing about what's going on. Wouldn't it be smart to be able to include them in a very practical, tangible way? So it was a bit of the heart piece that made it make so much sense to me. As I would talk with investors, I would hear things that some people just miss, the needs that they were looking for, the the desires for their own investment growth, the opportunities that they felt they were missing out on. And I knew I can build this. I can build this business. And so as, again, the investor conversation continued and my own apartment portfolio grew and grew, I said, I need to link these things together. Now, the process to do so is a complicated one. The timing is critical. The partnerships have to be in place. They have to be stable. And that's invited a whole additional list of lessons and opportunities to overcome things and you know more difficult conversations and making connections that are lifelong connections. But that's what drew me in was wanting to be unselfish about it, wanting to be able to share with a wider population than you know, just the people who would ask me. Love that. You know, there are folks that invest in real estate when the sun is shining and they hit their first challenge and they throw up their hands and they say, well, this is too hard. I'm not going to do it. But time and time again, you've been able to push through those things. Talk about that part of it, because things don't always go well in real estate and you can just give up or you can push through. That's such a it's such a true point. Nothing that I have done in this early stage I would characterize as easy in any degree. None of it has come very naturally, but there's always been a glimmer of the right process taking place, the right person arriving at the right time, uh, you know, a harmonious unfoldment at the right moment that says, yes, we can continue in this way. So as I continued to learn, I started to make some meaningful partnerships, the right property manager, perhaps the right general contractor, and add them to a list. It's same with investment folks. Someone would say, I really want to buy apartments in the St. Louis marketplace at this property type, and I've got this much money to spend. And I go, excellent. They're going to go on the list. As that list started to grow, so did our progress. So the right partnerships were in place, the right investors were in place, and that started to be inspiring. And it started to help me see beyond some of the day-to-day -day challenges. Hey, I might be able to help this investor fit into the place they want to be. They really want to spend time with their family, but they want to put money to work. That's what I can do. I can do this here. Some of those little glimmers of harmony along the way kept me going forward, even when you know we were duking it out with a former property manager about repairs not paid for, which weren't executed and issues that 
occur for every real estate investor. You know, there's a lot of reasons to get started early, get started young. You have time to make mistakes and figure it out. The beauty of compounding over time works in your favor. But there's also some challenges. When you're young, people might not take you as seriously. You might not have uh, the experience resume. Speak to that part of it, because you've done a, a great job of getting through the difficult stages that you've talked about to kind of propel yourself to this next level. It seems to me that the first reaction when someone wants to begin a sales transaction or a business relationship is they are curious about who you are, but where my natural salesman skills came to the forefront, kind of came to the rescue when I needed them to is because I would get people talking about themselves. I would get sellers talking about why they were exiting. And so from that, I wouldn't have to expose too much of my inexperience, wouldn't have to talk too much about what I knew and didn't know. But as I got people talking and got them sharing, I could begin to insert myself in ways that were helpful to them. As our property manager agreed to take on the portfolio, I knew this gentleman's been in the business for probably three times as long as I've been alive. Yeah. How do I create a good relationship with him? By getting into what his business needs, what type of properties he wants to manage. If I can hear that first, then I'm basically saying, well, this is exactly what I'm offering you. And so it didn't matter about me or who I was. I knew I was fitting in the right places in someone else's picture as well. Well, one of the things I appreciate about you is your willingness to help. You uh, help other investors and you lead some of our online programs. And it's great to see you obviously have been to the Investor Summit and you know about our Young Investors program there. And it was great this year to see you step up and do some roundtables. And, you know, it's, it's like when you've got a young, enthusiastic person who hasn't invested before, sure, they'll listen to, you know, uh, the faculty, but when they see someone that appears to be just a few steps ahead of them, that can really, really uh, resonate. Can you speak to that? Sure. My first big turning point as a real estate investor was after my first time at the Investor Summit. Suddenly, I realized that entrepreneurial spark that had lit a couple of months prior suddenly had some gasoline to be able to pour on it. And at that summit, I noticed I had friends I was making who were motivated. And there were other people who were in my peer group who were a little less motivated. And the differentiation between people who were motivated became to me the people I wanted to spend time with. So as our next investor summit came around, yes, I was no longer a young adult in the young adults program, but I knew these are the people I want to spend time with. I want to be a full-time investor, which gratefully after the first investor summit, I was able to go full-time in real estate investment. But that was a product of my own decisions. So spending time with the people who were exactly who I wanted to become drew me there in such a natural fashion. And then, of course, in the ensuing summits that I've been on, the people who are also serious come to you and they say, you seem to be really motivated. You seem to be clear about where you're headed. And I go, I, I'm glad it seems that way. And here's some of the ways that I got that way. Here's some of the ways that I helped myself to clear out some of the clutter and to focus on what I really found meaningful. Well, I appreciate the candor that not everything goes well and that a lot of it has been very difficult, but you're also starting to see the fruits of doing the work. If there's someone out there that's, you know, 20, 22, 24 years old and they haven't pulled the trigger yet on real estate, what advice might you have for them? I would tell you as the listener who is sitting in that seat and wondering how to start, I would start making lists. Make a list of all the people you know who are in real estate or who are financially successful or who have a specific skill set that you think would fit well on your team, whether that's lawyer, property manager, general contractor, perhaps a handyman in your local market, perhaps a real estate agent that you that was friendly in your in a social setting that you were in. From that list, you may start to see some of the linkages, people who you know you can call when problems arise or when you have a question. I've leaned on so many mortgage professionals as our journey has gone along to figure out different angles that I could take because they were on my list because I knew I've got a strong enough relationship that they'll take my phone call and they can explain things to me that I'll never be able to learn without some help. So making a list of the people who you know would be willing to help you is such a great start. And then every person you meet, they go on the list too. Those lists become an operating system for 
how you can move quickly through your problems. Great stuff. Well, we appreciate uh, your time today and sharing your story, and we wish you continued success. Thank you both. There's Robbie Butler. We're talking today about getting started young, the highs, the lows, and everything in between. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Hey, this is Brad Sunrock, and I'm super excited to share with you about our sixth annual Apartment Investor National Conference, AIM That Con. This is the sixth year we've done this event, and in the past, we've had world-class speakers like Robert Kiyosaki, Grant Cardone, Jesse Itzler, Ed Milet, and this year, it's going to be so many great speakers. We already have some lined up. It's going to be an outstanding event, whether you're new to apartments, already syndicating large deals, already have a successful business. If you want to learn how to make more money and pay less taxes with apartment investing, this is the event for you. Join the Apartment King, Brad Sumrock, and our rock star lineup of speakers at the 6th Annual Apartment Investor Mastery National Conference, AIM NatCon 2023. It happens in Dallas, Texas, August 25th through 27th, and you get all the details by sending an email to aimnatcon at realestateguysradio.com. That's aimnatcon at realestateguysradio.com. Real Estate Guys listeners, are you tired of losing real estate deals due to financing issues? Have you had enough of waiting on banks, lenders, and investor groups to fund new projects? What if there were a way to eliminate all the hassle and invest in real estate on your own terms? I'm here to tell you there is. Patrick Donahoe here from Paradigm Life. I'm an Investopedia Top 100 Most Influential Financial Advisor, and I recently wrote a best-selling book about the financial strategy that changed my entire investment model, and the one that could change yours. To get a copy of my book for free and learn how you can maximize your real estate portfolio by acting as your own bank, send an email to mybank at realestateguysradio.com. Don't make another real estate deal without reading my book first. Email mybank at realestateguysradio.com now to get your copy for free. Hey, I'm Jim Grant. I uh, am the editor and indeed the founder of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. And you, ladies and gentlemen, you lucky people, are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. Hey, join us for the 49th annual New Orleans Investment Conference. It takes place in early November. It's going to be outstanding. You can get all the details as well as an invitation to The Real Estate Guys private party if you'll send an email to New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com. The future belongs to the young, and the earlier you get started in real estate, the more impact you can have. Today, we're talking to some fabulous young folks who are seeing success in real estate investing. Please welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program, our young friend, Travis Godin. Hey, Travis. Hey, Robert. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for agreeing to be on the program, Travis. You are an extraordinary young man, and you've been hanging around the Real Estate Guys for a while. How old were you when you first came to a Real Estate Guys event? Do you remember? I believe I was uh, 22. All right. Well, awesome. It's been great to see your success over the years. You know, a lot of people, when they approach real estate at a young age, they are interested, they're enthusiastic, they they want to be involved, but they have this kind of self-doubt. Maybe I'm, I'm too young. Maybe I don't have enough working for me. Maybe I don't have enough money. I don't have enough connections. I don't have credibility. Talk about when you were getting started, just overcoming some of those mental hurdles, if you will. Yeah, absolutely, Robert. So, uh, yeah, I kind of just uh, have always uh, been an entrepreneur, if you will. You know, started eight, nine, ten years old, you know, mowing lawns and just working all the time on the weekends and stuff in summer as a, as a kid and uh, born uh, and raised at a ranch, you know, ranch and agriculture family. So, you know, learned a lot of good, uh, good work ethic there, kind of just taught me how to work and uh get creative on getting things done. So a lot of the overcoming for me was, uh, you know, you just, you just put your head down and get to work. And that's, that's kind of just how I, how I started. And, uh, over the years, you know, one thing uh, led to another and just uh, always uh, expanding and, and growing your network was uh, probably and is the biggest part of that. You know, one of the things I appreciate about you, Travis, is you just continue to show up. I see you at our events. I see you at other events. You get out into the world. 
Talk about that, because I think a lot of young investors think they can accomplish it by just staying home, reading books, listening to podcasts. But you actually get out in the world quite a bit. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. One of the sayings I like is, uh, you know, strangers have everything you want. Uh, you know, we're always <laughs> taught as uh, kids and stuff, stranger danger. But, you know, that's farther from the truth. You have to you have to get out and meet people and, you know, make sure they align with your values, of course. But just getting out and showing up, I mean, that that's how you get anything done. Nobody ever did anything by themselves. Uh, you, you need a team and, and you need a network. And that's the most uh, powerful, powerful ingredient. Love that. Well, hey, let's talk about what you do in real estate because it's kind of unique, but you've got an interesting primary focus. Uh, share with the listeners what that is and how you got into it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my primary kind of core uh, asset or focus is uh, ground leases uh, underneath uh, large uh, utility scale uh, solar farms installations. Got uh, Just got into that once again, kind of uh, by chance. I uh, My first business in uh, high school and college was uh, trucking and primarily uh, hauling water for construction and drilling and different types of jobs like that started getting contracts for solar farms and whatnot as they were starting to build them uh, out here in Nevada and just kind of through that door is how I transitioned into that niche type of real estate and once again just you know met the right folks uh, and came along and uh, yeah it just ended up being uh, being my thing and uh, got into that about 2016 and still hard at it today you know starting a business in your early 20s is not easy it's not easy at any time but you had perseverance and you figured it out you got around the right people you got mentors Travis, talk about getting to the next level once you've got the bases covered and now you're looking to expand to scale your business Take us through that part of your journey. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just comes back to uh, where you can fit into, you know, somebody's uh, kind of their own, uh, you know, somebody that's up the up the ladder a few rungs from you, how, how you can bring value to them with what you have. And that's exactly what I did, uh, you know, happened to, you know, meet a gentleman that uh, had uh, significant uh, land holdings and said, hey, let's partner up in a fashion and I can bring the, the solar companies and, you know, he has the land and, you know, uh, made a, has made a great partnership. And have done that in uh, multiple ways across, you know, different different uh, deals and and whatnot. So I think it's all as far as scaling and whatnot is, you know, just finding someone that has what you need, but making sure that you can, you know, bring them so something they need, and that's kind of the most uh, critical piece for able to scale. I think it, you know it's a lot easier to uh, latch on to something that somebody's already got going and all the bugs worked out, and you could just kind of co come alongside rather than. You know, trying to start your own whole thing, which uh, talented people can do it, but uh, you uh, definitely uh, can take a, a faster path if, if you can find that uh, alignment. Well, I love the part about figuring out a way to add value. That's critical, especially when you're a young guy. You know, people make whatever judgment calls they think maybe you don't have the experience or you'd lack success. But I've watched you in several circumstances figure out how to add value, how to bring more than you get. And it's refreshing when a seasoned investor looks at a young man and says, wow, this guy really has something to offer. Yeah. As more opportunities come my way, uh, pinching myself, quite frankly, like, why would, you know, somebody at that level, like, look at me. Uh, but people ask me that all the time. And I just, you know, back to our uh, premise of the conversation, just uh, showing up and trying to be attentive and, uh, you know, show that you, uh, you know, want to come up in the world and, and do it in the right way and the uh, uh, ethical way. And uh, at some point, uh, people will notice and uh, doors will open you never thought could. Now, obviously, we're all in favor of folks starting at a young age. But let's face it, there are some hurdles when you're starting out. You probably don't have the ability to qualify for loans, at least not big loans. You may not have the amount of savings yet. You don't have the financial chops or the business experience. But Travis, you've figured out how to get around some of those hurdles. If there's a listener today that's maybe in their early 20s or a parent of a kid in their 20s listening, what would you say to someone who's just starting out? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd say, you know, there's going to, at least for me, there was a few years where it just, you know, it was it was a hard go, like figuring out what do I want to do? What do I want to focus on? What, where can I find my place in the world was very, very difficult. And, uh, you know, I've had that question asked several times and, what I tell those people is just just try a bunch of stuff. That's kind of what I did. Uh, you know, just try try a bunch of different things for six months, a year, what whatever uh, you you think, and just try to get a flavor of a bunch of stuff. And uh, you know, you'll kind of mix and match and muddle your way through it. And that's kind of <laughs> I know it's not the best advice, but that's kind of what I just had to do. Uh, it's it's not a fun process at all, but eventually you're you know kind of get into something and catch your rhythm and and away you go. 
Uh, but I think you just kind of have to make yourself uh, go through the weeds a bit and uh, come out the other side. No, that's great practical advice. And that's what we love to strive for is the real world stuff. You know, you can put it all on the chalkboard and you can learn, you know, what we call head knowledge. But then you got to get out and actually get in the world and try stuff out, find out what you like, find out what you're good at. You know, a few years ago, we uh, tapped you to kind of help out with our Young Investor Program. Uh, that's part of our Investor Summit. So once a year, as you know, you've been to the summit many times. Uh, we get together with a whole bunch of investors and an amazing faculty, and we uh, decided we wanted to open it up to young folks. And the program is for people that are 18 to 25, and you're just slightly above that now. But since you'd been through uh, the summit and we just kind of watched the way that you approached business and relationships with people. Uh, I thought you'd be an excellent candidate. And uh, that's been a lot of fun to see. So talk about that, about really developing relationships and kind of a leadership role with other young entrepreneurs. Yeah. So uh, the first real estate guys event I ever attended was uh, the summit at uh, summit at C young adult program. And, uh, you know, definitely the first time, I mean, you're just, your, your mind is just so, so full and you learn all these different things you never hear anywhere else. So definitely a, a life changing experience. And then have been coming back every year, every year since and was uh, honored uh, for you guys to, to reach out and have me be a part of that, uh, you know, go, going forward after being out of the program. And yeah, it's just a great, uh, you know, recommend, uh, you know, any young person that's, you know, into investing or entrepreneurship or, you know, just wanting to get ahead in general to, to come and check things out. And uh, I don't, I don't think you'll be disappointed and, you know, a great, a great spot to, to start or continue. Uh, you know, it's uh, just a real good experience and, you know, you just get access to, great people and be able to spend a lot of time, not just a, you know, five minute, five minute conversation at a, a event somewhere. It's, you know, you can have hour long conversations. So it's just a really great experience uh, as a young person. And, you know, I, I recommend it to, to anybody that, you know, has, has that drive to go, uh, go do something like that. You know, we've had uh, extraordinary young folks come through the program. Many come, you know, more than one year. And yet I know people are overwhelmed. And the first time, like you say, no matter what age you are, the first time you come in the summit, it's just, it's a little overwhelming. There's just all this information and just nonstop meeting and talking and discussions and the dinners and the roundtables over lunch and all that stuff. But, you know, how do you eat an elephant a bite at a time? And, you know, I watched you show up, you know, eager and young and get in there and have those conversations and, and be part of it. And then when you come back uh, the second year, now you're you're kind of knowing what to expect. And before long, uh, you're leading those discussions and, and so forth. So uh, appreciate the work you've done uh, there. It's just, uh, you know, a labor of love, if you will. But I know that when the young people come and they have someone like yourself who's been multiple times that they can relate to because, frankly, of your age, they look at us old guys and like, well, you know, I can learn from these guys. But when they see evidence of success, someone who is just a few years ahead of them doing the thing, that's a that's a huge way to learn. And I was amazed this year. We know we had Kenny McElroy, as you know, and both of his kids, Kyle and Cade, came and they'd been on the summit several times. But this is the first time they've been uh, as young adults in the age range we're talking about. And to watch the group gel this year was pretty extraordinary. Well, yeah, completely, completely agree. Uh, yeah, it was uh, great having those those guys. And as you know, uh, you know, Kenny has a wealth of knowledge and uh, can definitely d distill wisdom down in, in very succinct ways. And uh, yeah, uh, it was it was uh, definitely a, a special special year in that regard with just the way the, the group came together and how all the all the young adults. Uh, had a great time. Well, before we're done, we'll tell folks how they can learn more about uh, the Young Investor Program. In our few minutes remaining, Travis, uh, maybe if you could share just some of the big lessons that you've learned. You've not been investing for decades and decades, but you really have collapsed time frames. You've been able to accomplish a, a lot for someone who's not even 30 yet. But just along the way, what are some of the big takeaways, some of the big lessons that you've gleaned? Yeah, I think one of the bigger ones is uh, as you go along, just, uh, you know, align yourself with the, the leaders in the space or, or you know, some of, some of the best names uh, uh, out there. Um, you know, that's, that's really important. Make sure those people that, you know, you're getting advice from or, or even doing business with, you know, have, have long uh, track records and uh, good success. You know, number two, I would just kind of advise to just play full out, but also don't, don't bet the ranch on anything or, 
make it uh make sure that uh you never have to do a deal if that makes sense that you uh you know always uh come at it from a logical standpoint and uh weigh the ups and downs but uh try to uh keep those uh, uh emotional uh strings in check and just make sure you're coming at everything from a logical perspective as a young person especially have have your whole life to uh you know do deals and you know do different things so you know just uh Make sure that you're uh, doing stuff that aligns with you and, uh, you know, that you can build upon 10, 20, 30 years from now and uh, have have a lot of equity, if you will, built up into it. Not just uh, doing things that, you know, satisfy a need for now, but uh, aren't going to build you that foundation going forward. So I think those would be my kind of kind of two pillars of advice is, uh, you know, just just focus on aligning with with good folks. And and then, you know, secondly, uh, just just doing good business and 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 being prudent and uh just knowing you've got a lot a lot of time to uh do a lot of deals and uh to not do something that's uh you know gonna gonna set you back uh, a, a long ways that's gonna take you a long time to recover from those would be those would be my two piece of advice all right that is good stuff you know most investors wish they had started earlier so today we're highlighting folks that started early and it's never too late to get started in real estate. Travis, thanks so much for sharing with us today. Thanks for having me, Robert. There's our friend Travis Godin. We're talking today about the power in starting young and the possibilities for young investors. More when we come back, you're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. As I speak, inflation is robbing you at a rate north of 10%. Last year, the number one zip code that Mid-South Home Buyers offered income property to Real Estate Guys listeners in appreciated by 21%. To harness that spread and protect and grow your wealth in the current economic storm, you need the two decades of experience in renovation and management that Mid-South Home Buyers brings to their investors. Every home Mid-South offers you will have brand new components, a new 30-year roof, and a high-quality renter, all in a price range under $150,000. Their empathetic property managers will use your ROI as their North Star, while the lack of repairs on their totally renovated properties contributes to their almost four-year average renter stay and 99% occupancy rate. Learn about their lifetime occupancy guarantee and total one-year maintenance guarantee by emailing MidSouth at realestateguysradio.com. That's MidSouth at realestateguysradio.com. You'll be glad you did. If you've been listening to the Real Estate Guys for a while, then you've heard about the legendary Investor Summit. Simply put, it's the highest level event we do. And the content, faculty, and attendees are amazing. If you're serious about taking your real estate investing to the next level, consider joining us. You'll spend more than a week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals, and you'll have a blast. It all takes place next summer, so to get the details before they're released to the general public, send an email to summit at realestateguysradio.com with the subject Summit 2024. We'll add you to the advance notice list, and you'll be invited to spend a fun-filled week learning and networking with more than 25 class sessions and breakouts, plus a small format roundtable discussions, great dinner conversations, and a ton of fun. Send an email to summit at realestateguysradio.com with the subject Summit 2024 and be among the first to get the details to join the Real Estate Guys and an all-star faculty on the 22nd Annual Investor Summit. Hey, this is Phil Collin from Def Level and Delta Deep. You're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio show. Thanks for tuning into the program. Hey, if you ever wanted to do bigger deals using other people's money, then come on out to the Secrets of Successful Syndication, our two-day workshop on putting together bigger deals or investing alongside those deals. It happens October 6th and 7th in Dallas, Texas. All the details on the website at realestateguysradio.com. Under the tab that says Events, We're talking today about getting started early. We've got three amazing young investors on the program. Before we get back to those interviews, time to play real estate trivia. That's your chance to win a prize by knowing today's real estate trivia question. When you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. That's trivia at realestateguysradio.com. First person that gets it right gets an awesome book by our friend and Rich Dad advisor, Garrett Sutton. He's an attorney, and the book's called How to Use Limited Liability Companies and Limited Partnerships. That can be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. 
Last week on the program, we had our short-term rental panel recorded live from our Investors Summit over the summer, and we asked this, which country boasts the highest occupancy for short-term rentals in 2022? Well, the answer is Luxembourg. According to Airbtix, Europe is responsible for almost half of the world's tourist arrivals, and the country with the highest occupancy rate is Luxembourg at 73%. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. Star Wars fans have the opportunity to spend the night in Luke Skywalker's boyhood home as depicted in Episode 4, the first Star Wars movie. In the film, it's depicted as a moisture farm on Tatooine, but it's actually located here on Earth. Where is it? Yeah, the home where Luke Skywalker grew up. If you know where it is, or you just want to take a guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. The first person that gets it right gets this awesome book from Garrett Sutton called How to Use Limited Liability Companies and Limited Partnerships. That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking today about getting started at a young age. We look back and say, man, if I'd only started earlier. And our final guest today is a gentleman who started investing in his 20s. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program, the amazing Sepp Bacom. Hey, Sepp. Hey, guys. Great to see you. Well, good to have you on the program. When we're not talking about Halloween horror stories, you hold the record of having the most Halloween horror <laughs> stories. But uh, part of that's because you do a lot of deals. But before we get to where you're at today, Sepp, take us back to the beginning. You started uh, as a young engineer, you got the real estate bug, and you bought your first property while you were still in your 20s. How, how did that come about? What got you into the business, and, and how did it go? Yeah, back then, uh, I I was working as a full-time engineer and going for school uh, for my master's. I got the real estate bug, and I thought, hey, if I could just buy one rental property a year, that'll take me to financial freedom. Pretty quickly after I bought my first two turnkey properties, quote unquote, that, that weren't actually turnkey. Uh, I, I attended your guys' Secrets of Successful Syndication seminar and just, it changed my life. Because uh, then I realized, well, instead of just buying one property per year with my own money, uh, I can I can buy more deals and, you know, maybe get less of the piece of the pie, but, you know, can buy it with other investors, help them hedge against inflation, help myself against, hedge against inflation. And, uh, you know, everyone, everyone wins from that. But, um, just the 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 mindset shift i i it's still kind of fresh in my memory like i i thought very differently back then compared to today i've spent a lot of time with you guys uh attending the live events listen to all the podcasts and just this whole notion that everyone needs to win right and not just make it win lose that really has helped make it a much more uh, enjoyable and scalable operation like at the beginning i would look at the brokers and there, there was a funny experience one time at the second syndication seminar you brought me up on stage and you said stop tell us about the syndication you did and I'm like well i bought some deals and you said what are you working on now and uh i got a couple deals on a contract or may or may not close on these deals but uh you know the cool thing is even if you don't close on a deal you can take pictures you can go back you can share that deal with your investors and say this is what i learned from it Right. And I thought that was a good way to, to create content just by getting deals on a contract and not closing them. So I go sit down on my seat afterwards and you brought Kim McElroy up right afterwards. And Kenny on stage said, you know, there's a syndicator that went before me and he shared uh, some advice uh, about, you know, just getting deals on a contract, not closing. And, and I'll tell you, if you do that, uh, your reputation will precede you. You have one reputation and you have to guard that. You know, brokers aren't going to want to work with people who don't close. Like they need to get paid, they need to get fed, and you guys talk about that too. Um, and th it was a very different mindset. You know, like some people want to go and become a broker so they can save on a commission, and you guys really teach like creating, thinking about in terms of a business and and valuing the relationships and you know seeing the the counterparty risk, right? Um, like I don't need to have a real estate license. I don't need to have an MBA. I just need to make sure I can find the best people to to serve the customer that I'm serving in this particular market or investment. And that, that's that been a game changer. Well, Seth, you bring up a really great point, uh, especially for young people listening, that your perspective and your experience and your wisdom changes with every deal you do. You looked at it a way back then. And as an engineer, you think about, okay, what's going to be the least expensive way? And I'm going to get bids and just all the things that people do. And you might say, well, gosh, I could quote unquote, save some money by not using a real estate broker. But we know how that usually turns out. 
And in reality, we've watched you go from a one-man band to really scaling and doing bigger deals, tons of deals, hundreds and hundreds of properties. And part of that is this mind shift change. And I think, unfortunately, for whatever reason, when people are young, they discount their ability. They think, well, I, I don't have what it takes, and there's people that are you know, older than me and more experienced, but, but you proved that you can come along, start. You didn't just learn. You didn't just read and go to classes and listen to podcasts. You actually did buy properties in Texas and took that experience and learned from it. Talk about that part of it, how you continue to get feedback as an investor, and it propels you forward. At the beginning, I thought that the solution was just in the deals. Like the more deals I can accumulate, the faster I can get out of the rat race, the the more time I'll have, and just having more deals is going to solve the problem, right? And I thought it was just more important just at the beginning, before I learned about syndication, just save as much money as possible and then invest all of it into a down payment for real estate. And I didn't realize what underwriting meant. I didn't realize that I could be undercapitalized on deals, right? And with syndication, I, I had to do cash calls at the beginning. It was, it was very embarrassing. And what that means is you, you get into a syndication thinking that you know the deal is just going to be profitable from day one. It's going to cash flow. But no, it's, it's losing money. You have, to, you have to ask investors for more money. But to take a step further than that is like just realizing that those types of uh, problems get solved by spending time around smarter investors. And you guys had the mentoring club at the beginning. Um, when I was brand new, I remember at the first uh, mentoring club back in 2010, I, I was so excited. I had my first two turnkey properties and there was someone else sitting next to me uh, at, at the event. And he was so humble. He was so just open to share, right? Just like everyone in your tribe. They're just amazing. And uh, he had a hundred properties and I would never have known that because he was just a regular guy. I could have, you know, he looked like anyone on the street, but we masterminded through you guys' investor mentoring club. We had, um, and we actually we wanted to get together more often. So we meet like bi-weekly or weekly and we get some other real estate guys listeners together. And, you know, they're reading the same book, but they were reading books I had never even heard of. And they started introducing me to the personal development books, you know, Jim Rohn and Brian Tracy and Dennis Waitley, or Earl Nightingale and all that. Uh, and of course, you know, Kiyosaki, which, which I was, uh, had the, the bug for, but I realized that uh, just getting around them and the mindset changed everything. Like the timeframes collapsed much faster than just making it all about the deals. Because the problem with making it all around the deals is we get so focused in the minutia and we can kind of have our head down and we don't see the bigger picture. Like getting around other investors who have been through invest, uh, for the recessions or getting around other investors who have lost money before, who have seen market cycles, helps us, you know, if we're open to it, we can learn from them so we don't have to make those uh, same mistakes. But also like, you know, Simon Black had mentioned at one of you guys' previous summits, you know, add, add a zero to your thinking, right? I, I realized I was thinking way too small by just the old, um, you know, mindset. But um, by by learning from those uh, other investors, I was able to, to add zero and, you know, more than one zero to the portfolio. Well, and that's really such a good point. You do have to get around folks that are really doing it. And there's opportunity to do that if you're interested, if you're eager, and if you're humble. And you talked about humility. I think it's something we see in most successful folks. Here's the reality. There are going to be problems. There are going to be challenges. Things aren't always going to go as planned or as scripted. It's kind of why you've been on Halloween Horror Stories a few times, because stuff happens. It's not what happens to you. It's how you react and building that resilience. And I know personally that you've been through some stuff. So talk about dealing with adversity, because that's one of the realities of real estate. It's not guaranteed. It's not get rich quick. It's sticky and yucky sometimes, but... To be resilient means you live to play another day. Can you speak to that? Yeah, that was another big paradigm shift because at the beginning, I thought that like if you buy a property, and that, that was part of the reason why I gravitated towards turnkey at the beginning is I thought, okay, it's just going to cash flow and I can just go do other things. Like I don't have to worry uh, so much about the property after I buy it. I can just go focus on buying more properties. You know, through you guys, I learned that real estate is still a business, right? I, my, my, my opinion is that there's no such thing as a turnkey property because there's no such thing as a turnkey tenant especially in C and D class, right? Like right. you could have a great property. And as you guys say, like if you have a bad team, they can turn that great property into a bad property. But then if you have a great team and a bad property, they can turn into a great property. You know, the, there was a really good book from the mastermind days that was recommended to me by uh, John Maxwell called Failing Forward. And it, it reminds me also of another book by Kiyosaki called Why A Students Work for C Students and B Students Work for the Government. 
And then what school teaches us is you have to get it right the first time. You have to be perfect. You can't make mistakes. Mistakes are bad. But from all the successful entrepreneurs that I've I've gotten, I've had the privilege of spending time from and learning from within your guys' event, I've noticed that they, they don't look at failure as a bad thing. I mean, you want to, you don't, it's painful. It sucks, right? Like you, you don't want to lose the whole farm. It, like there's nothing wrong with learning from it, right? And and getting back up. I think Kiyosaki even said like fail nine times, get up 10 times, right? That That's where I think the, the big lesson is, is not not being ashamed or or just trying to avoid it, but what can be learned from it, right? Because if you can learn from a failure and if you can create a solution out of it, then you can go solve those problems that other people are are afraid of. And that's kind of what helped me expand within the affordable space you know, for every for every one person that's doing D or D class housing, you hear a hundred people saying, "Don't do it. You're gonna lose money, and it's just gonna be a challenge, and it's the worst tenants ever." Like, okay, well then that's more opportunity for us and our teams that can actually go and solve it. We still make mistakes, you know, still learn from it, but there's there's a need for that, and there's even a greater need for that nowadays with inflation, whether it, where it is right now. It's an it's an amazing benefit that I I didn't get until actually like rubbing shoulders with other uh, other more successful people who were much further along than I was from your guys' events. Now, Sep, when you started, you were a full time professional and you were pursuing your education and you were investing on the side, and that's how a lot of people start. They buy a property, and you know the younger you can buy your first property, the better, right? Compound interest and all that stuff, plus just the leverage of relationships that happen. Uh, fast forward to today, and you're a full time real estate professional. You raise money. You mentioned syndication a few times folks that listen to our show and that we're big fans of putting together deals that are syndicates there are several people who come together with capital to do these bigger deals but specifically you were out raising capital at a pretty young age and so you would commonly be talking to someone in their 40s, 50s, 60s, or 70s about investing when you're in your 20s and 30s. Talk about that part of the business because we believe syndication is one of the greatest business opportunities there is. But I know people have this fear that, well, maybe I'm too young to do it. Right. I've learned that most people want the benefit of real estate, but they don't want the late nights that come with it. They don't want the, you know, because it's it's, it's not, uh, for a lot of people, it's not easy to find deal flow. It's not easy to assemble great teams. You know, finding contractors that are great uh, is very different than finding just a contractor, right? (laughs) Same thing with property managers, whatever it be. You know, just talking with the investors, uh, for, for me, you know, just being naturally shy, it wasn't something that it, it, my, my heart would always race right before the meeting. I get very nervous. What if I'm going to say the wrong thing or what if I'm going to make a fool of myself? And that's happened multiple times, but you learn from it, right? You know, rest of sales training has been, you know, phenomenal as, as far as like being, being able to help me realize that it's not about what I want and my fears and my goals. It's about, okay, I'm going to be a great listener and I'm going to, I'm going to make it about being a problem solver. I'm going to genuinely care about listening to what it is that the investor wants, what are their needs, and how can I help them? And, and maybe it's not even my deal. Maybe I just need to connect them with someone. Maybe I need to introduce them to someone, or maybe there's you know some, like what, what solution can I give them that, that can help them with that? And maybe it might be a deal, right? But it, it has to be like the doctor uh, seeing a patient. Like if, if, you know, if a patient is not sick, the doctor uh, or, or shouldn't pre- prescribe medicine to the patient, right? That would be malpractice. You know, they, they only give the patient the specific prescription for what's necessary. Fast forward, you know, for the types of properties that, that we do, they're, they're more challenging, right? Like they're, we buy a lot of properties, frankly, from slumlords. Uh, we buy properties from distressed sellers and they're don't wanters. So they have a pain point. Like they either have a tenant that's not paying rent for weeks, for months, for years, um, and they want to get out, Right. So when we buy those properties, uh, we basically treat those sellers like investors. I stay in touch with them. I send them the before and after pictures of the renovations. I Same thing I would do with the investors. Like, hey, how can I help? You know, just genuinely care about them. Uh, when the property is all done, a lot of times they'll say, I, I had no idea that the house would ever look like that or could look like that. Hey, Seth, you know, let me know if there's another deal coming around the corner. So that, that's that been, a, a, frankly, I mean, where a lot of our investors have come from is just from from sellers, the same sellers we buy the properties from. Not all, but most of them. Most of them end up being good people who they're not passionate about or they don't have the team that can manage those types of properties. But if we do, then there's a way that we can work together and you know everyone benefits from it. Hey, Sep, now that uh, you're long in the tooth in your 30s, uh, if you could go back to your 20-year-old self, what kind of advice might you give knowing what you now know? It, it's, it's ironic that you're saying that, Robert, because I'm at another mastermind right now, and I was talking about that with some other successful investors. And part of me wants to say that, you know, if 
if it wasn't for the good and the bad, then I don't think that there would have been more good that would have come out of that. Like I'm, I'm at the point now, I'm like, I'm thankful for, for the, the tough times, like the mistakes. And it's like, you know, when you get fired by a property manager, when you have a contractor that steals money or you have, you know, eviction moratoriums because of COVID and all that, it, it makes you a better investor. You become more resilient. Right. And you, you know, you don't want to become too pessimistic about it, but you know, it's just, Good things can come out of the 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 pain, right? And as the saying goes, no pain, no gain. When it comes to like uh, weightlifting and all, the one thing that if, I I think if I if I could tell a younger version of myself is don't focus as much on just the down payments and just accumulated properties. It's more important to get around other successful investors the sooner and the more often you can. Because I've I've realized, I mean, you guys as tribe is like world class, right? I've gone to a lot of real estate events and there's a lot of other great, you know, real estate conferences and podcasts. But what I like about your guys' tribe at any of the events, if it's the goals retreat, if it's the summit, it's the syndication seminar, is you tend to see more abundant minded investors there. And as Russ has said, successful people, like rich people, tend to be more curious and they tend to be more willing to uh, help and share. And, you know, like if you ask them for a book recommendation, chances are they're going to share, you know, this is the book that you should read. Or, if, you know, if you need help with something, you want to be respectful of their time. Right. But if they're at a conference and you, know, you buy them a beer, then they're they're more inclined to to help out with that. I tell my younger self, like, just put that maybe instead of buying like that, that second or third house, like put some of that and allocate that towards investing in high quality masterminds or conferences. You know, the good thing that comes out of it is that the conferences and masterminds are so good, you get addicted to it. So then it forces you to go and want to do more deals afterwards so you can keep going. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Well, Sep, we appreciate those kind words and sharing your wisdom with us today. That's Sep Bacom from Bacom Investment Group. If you want to meet Sep, come on out to a Real Estate Guys event because he's at most of them. Appreciate you. Thanks, Sep. Thanks, guys. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. Or we come back. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Live nationwide, you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get everything you've ever dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2024 Goals Retreat, January 12th to 14th in Dallas, Texas. This unique weekend event has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at goalsretreat.com. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the 2024 Goals Retreat on the second weekend of the new year. Visit goalsretreat.com to learn more and get on the advanced notice list. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit goalsretreat.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18. That's goalsretreat.com. The Real Estate Guys are throwing a party and you're invited. Join us at the New Orleans Investment Conference, November 1st through 4th. Now in its 49th year, it's the world's longest running investment conference and features some of the biggest names in economics and investing, including James Rickards, George Gammon, Danielle DiMartino Booth, Rick Rule, and Peter Schiff. The Real Estate Guys are speaking in multiple sessions, attending lots of others, and we're hosting an invitation-only party one of the evenings for our friends and listeners, including some VIPs for you to mingle with. So make your plans to join the Real Estate Guys at the New Orleans Investment Conference. With all that's going on in the world, no serious investor can afford to miss it. Send an email to neworleans at realestateguysradio.com and we'll get you all the details. That's neworleans at realestateguysradio.com and we'll see you there. Hi, this is Sam Freshman, author of Principles of Real Estate Syndication, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. Hey, if you're interested in getting to the next level in real estate and you want to raise some capital like some of our guests today have, then come on out to The Secrets of Successful Syndication. It's our two-day course on learning to either invest with other folks or to find those investors and in doing bigger deals together happens uh, in early October in Dallas, Texas. 
All the details, just send an email to syndication at realestateguysradio.com. Well, I don't know about you, Russ, but I feel enthused when I talk to young people and we've had some superstars today. Yeah, it's fantastic. It, it kind of makes me feel bad about myself because I, I look at how smart they are and how young they are and how much I'm learning from them. Uh, but I just think it goes to show you that it doesn't really matter how old you are, uh, that there's always an opportunity if you're curious, if you're humble. And then when you get around people who are successful, my experience has been they're largely pretty generous. And, and so a young person can take advantage of the fact that people who have accomplished some things in life tend to be willing to share. Uh, these guys are already successful or becoming well on their way to becoming successful and thinking that way, sharing their best ideas. I think there were some common themes there that are worthy of paying attention to. I think one of the things that I heard come out regularly was the importance of getting around the right people, getting in the right rooms, putting good ideas in your mind. We say all the time, what you think and believe affects what you do, what you do affects the results you produce. And so if you're around people that saying it can't be done or it's too hard or I don't know how to do it or it's the system's rigged and you can't make it and you need somebody to come along and do it for you or help you, then you're not really getting the message of what these guys are saying, which is, hey, it, it's not easy. It's a lot of work. But if you get around the right people, you get the right ideas, you're willing to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes and keep trying, you can totally get there. And then once you get to the point where you've learned some valuable lessons, including getting around more of the right people, you can start to share the things that you've learned to become value. When you see somebody in their 20s or 30s, adding a lot of value to investors that are in their 40s and 50s and have accumulated some wealth and are trying to bring that ship in for a landing in terms of their retirement. They want to use real estate to do it, but they don't know how to do it. They don't want to go back and be 20 or 30. They don't want to go back and do that work. But these guys like SEP that are coming along and and helping investors put their capital to work through the syndication concept is fantastic. But whether you do it in your own account or whether you do it, uh, help other people do it, the point is, is that getting around the right people, the right ideas and continuing to learn from the mistakes you make and not be afraid of the adversity. That's really the secret to success. As far as I can tell, listening to what these guys have to say. Well, and they're all guys that show up, right? They come to events, our events, other people's events. They listen, they're students. And I think you had another important thing. They're humble. And when you're young and you have some success it's not always easy to stay humble. We see that out there in the world, these young stars that uh, either are great at a sport or music or acting, and all of a sudden they've got all this money. It doesn't always go well. And when someone's from humble beginnings and they can keep that humility through the ups and downs of real estate, it's extraordinary. One of our favorite things is to pour into young people. And several years ago, we started our Young Investor Program, which is part of our annual Investor Summit. We carve out spots for about 30 young adults, ages 18 to 25. They pay a tuition, but it's less than the actual cost of the event. It's far less than the public price of the event because we want to seed the room with some of these amazing young people. And I'll tell you, over the years, it's been absolutely amazing to meet some of these inspired young folks. Well, and I think one of the things that young people don't realize is the value they add to older people is their curiosity, is their enthusiasm, and even their problems. When they come in and they say, hey, I'm trying to solve this problem in my life, when an older person or a more experienced person, it's not necessarily age, right? You can be an older person that's inexperienced in investing and talk to a younger investor like these guys. And in terms of investing, they're more experienced than you are. But the point is, when you give somebody the opportunity to share from their experience or wisdom, it actually is very, very rewarding. And you add a lot of value simply by being somebody there with a lot of questions or even a lot of problems. And all three of these guys all came through listeners. They were listeners to the program. People out there, you listen to my voice right now and you're sitting out there. These are guys that were sitting right where you're sitting. And they were just seeking answers and they're trying to find good ideas. And we were one of many podcasts they were listening to. Um, not every podcaster or a radio show gives you the opportunity to get in a room. We always try to make sure part of our program is creating rooms or inviting people to be part of rooms that we're going to be in or we know good people are going to be in. And you come in and get a chance to build those relationships. These guys took advantage of those things. And you hear us promote our events all the time. That's because every time we meet people like this and we see the impact that what we do makes in their lives, it's extremely rewarding for us, way beyond the money. But it's also really important in their development 
and then the opportunity for them to turn around and pay it forward, if you will. So if you're a young person out there and you get a chance to be in a room with these folks, you're not listening to, you know, a couple of old old guys. You know, you're listening to young people that I hope you can relate to and get get inspired by and believe, hey, if they can do it, I can do it too. And once you believe you can, you'll begin to take action. Once you begin to take action, you will. And that's where it starts to really get fun. We're about to open up registration for our 22nd annual Investor Summit. And if you're interested in that, you can still get on the advanced notice list if uh, by the time you hear this, maybe the registration will be open. But if you're a young person or you have a young person in your life and you think they could benefit from spending more than a week with successful investors and an amazing faculty, uh, you can get them signed up to be part of the Young Investor Program. If you're a young person and you're thinking that, wow, I'd love to come, but even at the reduced rate, it's still a lot of money, which it is, we have a scholarship program. And you can get the details uh, on that if you'll send an email to summit at realestateguysradio.com, summit at realestateguysradio.com, and just indicate in the email that you're interested in the Young Adult Scholarship Program. We'll let you know all about that. Big thanks to these folks who are sharing not only uh, their great ideas, uh, but their wisdom and experience. We can't wait to see what they do next. Speaking of what's coming next, we're going to do the summer of syndication. Some of the most successful people we know that are raising capital and doing big deals. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in hearing about, then stay tuned. Until next week, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at BeYourBank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.